what is up guys welcome back to another video here on the fantasy fellowship channel my name is kyle i got a quick one for you guys here today uh we're gonna be going over this espn article that i was looking at earlier today let me hop into a screen share here they're basically saying players who won't bounce back in 2023 so these might be their avoid list not sure i agree with all of these but we will get into it and let's just kind of go down the article and we'll, we'll kind of just name each player and kind of talk about that real quickly the first player here on the list is the saints wide receiver michael thomas and i am intrigued with michael thomas it's the first off season that he's been relatively healthy uh, in a long time here it says that uh, he has led this column in recent seasons, so we decided to pick on someone else in that lead role. Uh, still, Thomas belongs here, and he is, uh, as he and the overrated Beckham are going in the 10th round range of ESPN League. So uh, on the best ball sites that I'm playing on, he's kind of like in a ninth round pick right now. Uh, I don't hate it. If you need receivers, I think he can be a guy that you put on your bench. And see what happens if he does end up playing you know most of the season i think he's going to be pretty productive and if you look at his last three games or his first three games of, of 2022 he ended up playing pretty well and Derek carr's there there's excitement around the saints i don't hate putting thomas on my bench but i don't know if he's exactly going to bounce back or break out or whatever uh, i think i missed um i guess the main article here is about odell beckham so he is one of their their guys that they're not expecting to bounce back i do tend to agree with that i'm, I'm nervous about beckham he's being kind of drafted right around michael thomas as well uh in that ninth round range i think i'd rather have zay flowers or rashad bateman because they're all kind of being drafted in the same range so that's kind of where i go with with the beckham call uh but alan robinson another one to make the list it says unlike beckham and thomas who are being drafted in virtually all ESPN standard leagues. Robinson is the forgotten one, rostered in barely 3% of leagues. He goes undrafted in a lot of the best ball drafts that I do, and those are 18 to 20 rounds deep. So he is the kind of the number three receiver here. They also like Calvin Austin, the third, quite a bit there. So we'll see. It sounds like Robinson might be their starting slot receiver to begin the year. But again, I think Calvin Austin might get worked into here. So he's not a guy that I'm super excited about for the Steelers. We know it's Deontay. We know it's Pickens. We know it's Pat Frymuth. Those are the three pegs of the offense. And then they put some Bears receivers here, Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool. Uh, as with the Ravens, this team is quarterbacked by a talented runner who does his best statistical work when not throwing the pigskin often. Mooney had a strong 2021, then struggled last season before he got injured. Claypool, a Steelers star with nine touchdowns as a rookie in 2020, has three scores since and cost the Bears a high draft pick. DJ Moore enters the fold here, and I, I kind of agree. I don't think there's enough uh, passes to go around in this offense. I think DJ Moore is really the only draftable target. Uh, for the Bears in the receiving production. You can maybe argue about Cole Komet being a tight end two on our bench, but I think it's all DJ Moore here, not interested in Mooney, not interested in Claypool, even at their depressed ADPs. And then they got the Carolina Panthers veteran receivers here, Adam Thielen and DJ Chark. It says Thielen and Chark ostensibly replaced Moore in Carolina's new passing attack led by rookie Bryce Young, and it seems a bit dangerous to presume either receiver returns to pass statistical goodness. Thielen caught 24 TD passes in the 2020 and 21 seasons with Kirk Cousins, and Chark was solid with the Jags in 2020-19, and he had some moments last year with the Lions. I think I'm probably out on Adam Thielen. I Maybe he's a, a decent play for the first month or so, but I just he's up there in age. I think he's 33 now. I don't really trust it. I, I think if Chark stays healthy, though, that one... I'm still willing to put a little chip on him at the end of my bench. Uh, but actually, I, I'm, I'm kind of more excited about Mingo and Terrace Marshall Jr. I think those are the two better receiving options to bet on for the long haul. You know, again, maybe Thielen and Chark are, are good for the first month or so. But again, with their injury concerns and their age being up there, I feel better betting on Mingo, better betting on Terrace Marshall. But in redraft, I don't think we have to draft either of those guys. They could probably just be waiver wire picks. In best ball, though, I do take DJ Chark, Mingo, and Marshall. Um, Cordero Patterson, the Falcons running back, of course, they, they, they drafted B. John Robinson, Tyler Algiers there. Patterson's not really a running back anymore. He's probably going to be more used as like a third down receiving back role here. He doesn't need to be on our fantasy rosters. I think best ball only for me with Cordero Patterson. And, uh, yeah, there's just too many top end players here. They got B. John, Drake London, Kyle Pitts. Patterson's probably not even the fifth or sixth best player on this team. Now they put Antonio Gibson here. Uh, it says Gibson ran for more than 1,800 yards and scored 21 touchdowns in his first two NFL seasons, but the offense shifted to Brian Robinson last year and bruising running back Chris Rodriguez. Um, and they're saying he should have a positive impact in his rookie campaign. So I tend to disagree with this one. I think, yes, Brian Robinson and Chris Rodriguez are probably going to be the primary ball carriers in this offense, but man, oh man, the, the commanders have shown 
that they want to throw the ball to the running backs in the past. Gibson had 58 targets last year. J.D. McKissick also had 40 targets. So those top two backs had 98 targets in this offense last year. McKissick's not with the team anymore. I know they have Eric Bieniemy now with the with the offense uh, as the coordinator there. The Chiefs have thrown a lot of touchdowns in the red zone to the running back here. I think Gibson, he's a nice high-profile running back three in a full PPR league. I think half PPR and standard. I don't need Gibson on my squads, but – you know, I'm willing to put him on my bench. He goes pretty late in fantasy drafts right now. You can get him in the ninth or 10th round, I think, and I'm pretty open to that. I think in half PPR in standard, though, I do like Brian Robinson quite a bit more. So uh, that looks like uh, there's a little bit more here on the list. They have Clyde Edwards Alaire, a rookie darling during 2022 or during 2020. Uh, CEH has battled injuries since and has been bypassed on the depth chart by Isaiah Pacheco and Jarek McKinnon. Um, I, I'm kind of not out on Clyde Edwards Alaire. He's kind of free at the end of drafts right now. Isaiah Pacheco is nursing a handful of injuries. He had like a torn labrum and some other surgery this offseason. Jarek McKinnon didn't participate in minicamp and OTAs. Clyde Edwards Alaire was the guy getting all the run with the first team, as well as the uh the the I think he was a seventh round pick. Daneric Prince was getting a lot of run there. So we'll monitor the Chiefs running back situation. I don't trust Isaiah Pacheco. He's an undrafted free agent from last year. They don't owe him anything. They're probably going to give Clyde Edwards Alaire a chance to see what he can do. I wouldn't be surprised if I mean, even if, if Pacheco gets hurt, like Edwards is their best, you know, first and second down running back. So I'm not out on Pacheco or out on Clyde Edwards Alaire. He's just gonna need to, to prove a lot this summer. And then they got Dawson Knox here. Uh, Knox's fantasy PPR number uh, six in 2021. He all did a lot of touchdowns that season. They did draft Dalton Kincaid in the first round this year. So that's kind of, you know, putting Knox on the back burner here. I do think Knox is going to be their tight end. That, uh, he's going to get the most snaps on this offense. I think Kincaid's going to work primarily as a slot receiver. Uh, they're going to mix him in a little bit here, maybe do some more two tight end sets, but I still think Knox has a case to be a, a solid tight end on your bench. He's going to catch touchdowns. It's a high, it's a high passing volume offense. Uh, I'm not out on Dawson Knox, especially in best ball format. Uh, and that's it. That is their main list of guys here. And again, the main article was all about Odell Beckham. So if you guys want to read the article, I did link it in the description below. I'll probably even post it in the comments uh, for you guys there to read. So just a quick video for you guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will be doing a live stream tomorrow morning, Saturday, July 8th. We'll be doing a drafters $20 best ball draft on my birthday. So let's have fun with that. Enjoy the rest of your night. We'll see you in a future video, guys. Peace. Mm -hmm.